Now let's discuss the character of Lenato. He is the Duke of Messina and he's the man who invites Benedict, Claudio and Don Pedro to his home and of course it's because of this invitation that Claudio falls for his daughter Hero. Now he is presented as a very protective father and also a very caring uncle even if he does support the patriarchal structure at the time, patriarchy being a society that's controlled by men in the sense that he does also get a little bit tired and exasperated by Beatrice's strong-headed nature. So on the one hand he kind of tells Beatrice off, he tells her you know with your attitude you're never going to marry anybody so he does try to help her find love and ultimately this is how she manages to fall in love with uh, Benedict. However when he does uh, realize that Hero, when he falsely believes the accusations against Hero for not being a virgin, he also is really horrified about this and he asks for a dagger to kill himself because death really is the only thing that can cover up his shame. And even when Hero pretends to die, he is kind of happy when she, um, you know, falls and she faints because he wants that. It's so shameful to consider that his daughter might actually not be a virgin, okay? And of course, by the end, he's presented as also very honorable and forgiving of Claudio when he realizes that his daughter, you know, th these were all very false, slanderous things said against her and he decides that Claudio can still have Hero's hand in marriage. Now as you can see behind me, I've prepared key quotations to remember for his character, particularly if you're writing about him or other key characters in the play as part of your coursework or exam. So let's get started with the quotations and the word level analysis you need to do for Lenati's character. Now the first quotation is when he is showing that he's exasperated by Beatrice. He says, by my trophies, that will never get thee a husband. So here he's basically saying, Beatrice, if you keep on being so headstrong, you will never get married, okay? And of course that was seen as something that was really important during that time for women. They had to be passive and of course Beatrice isn't. Now the word level analysis here you want to do is the alliteration of T in trophies thou and thee. This shows that Lenato is being very emphatic when he's speaking. The second quotation to bear in mind with his character is when he uh, realizes or when it's revealed during Claudia and Hero's wedding that uh, Hero might not have been faithful and Claudia is denouncing her and he's so horrified and mortified he wants to be killed, he wants to die because he asks, hath no man's dagger hit a point for me? And this is a rhetorical question so that's one of the key things to point out. Now here of course what this is showing is how highly a woman's virginity was seen as and and, you know, a woman not being chased was seen as tantamount to her social death. And so he sees this as so shameful. Also, the other word level analysis you want to do is the ascent of eight and a half, man and dagger. In addition, within this same scene, he literally says to his daughter, death is the fairest cover for her shame. He, you know, when she faints, he says, oh, death is even better to cover this than, you know, her living and me having to know that my daughter has basically had sex outside of marriage. You can't believe it, okay? Now here, of course, what this is showing is he has very strong patriarchal views about women's role in society. Women are supposed to be virgins. Whilst men can run around and sleep with all these people, for example, Benedict being a bachelor, he's able to do that. However, if Hero, God forbid, she sleeps with a man, then that is something so shameful that death is really the best cover for that, okay? Now here, you want to talk about this notion of this metaphor, this metaphoric language, death being a cover, uh, a way of kind of changing and removing and averting people's gaze from Hero in order to maybe save her uh, reputation. If she dies, and that's really the only way that her reputation can maybe somewhat be restored. Now, the other quotation for Leonardo's character is when he states, within the same scene, do not live, Hero. Do not open thine eyes. And of course, here Hero has fainted and he's saying, oh, you know, don't live, stay dead, right? Because of course, he doesn't want her to revive and then, you know, have a renewed sense of shame that he has this living daughter who is not a virgin. Now, the word love analysis you want to do here is the repetition of do not, where he's very emphatic, Lenato, and also the assonance of E in live, Hero, ope thine and eyes. Now the final quotation of course this is when he realizes that his daughter is innocent and he asks, this is uh, one of the main accomplices uh, of um, Don John, he asks him, art thou the slave that with thy breath has killed my innocent child? Okay so this is a question, it's not a rhetorical question, it's an actual question and he's saying you know are you one of the people who plotted with Don John and of course this is when he realizes that Don John is the person who's at the center of all of these allegations and he realizes that his daughter is actually still a virgin, she's chaste, she's innocent okay so of course here we can see that he's very angry but ultimately he forgives Claudio and still lets him marry his daughter because he realizes that it's not Claudio's fault that he believed that, he was also deceived 
okay? Now, of course, this is a question and the word love analysis can do with this quotation is alliteration of T here to show that he's really angered to realize that somebody would tarnish his daughter's reputation. So that's it when it comes to Leonardo's character. Of course, he's one of the key characters within the play. So do make sure you try to pay attention to some of these quotations and use them and incorporate them in your writing. Thank you so much for listening.